بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستحديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده رسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أشتق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلال في النار After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starting with the sermon of need I start with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah we're gathered here today by the grace of Allah in one of the houses of the houses of Allah and I start by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward our brothers who made today this gathering possible as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Man la yashkur nas, la yashkur Allah. Whoever is not thankful to the people is not thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make heavy the balance of good deeds for those brothers who are facilitating this evening. May Allah accept their balance of good deeds and make it heavy on the day of judgment. Ameen. Brothers and sisters, I start with asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a dua. Allahumma ja'alna min ashab al-jannah O oh Allah make us from amongst the people of paradise and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he raises his dua to the highest of the heavens and may it be returned accepted that each and every one of us present today here will be answered in that dua Qulu Ameen Brothers and sisters in Islam Alhamdulillah Sometimes we need to refresh ourselves, remind ourselves, and to have a longing for paradise, for Jannah. Paradise that will breathe a breath of fresh life into our hearts for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when we forget to remember paradise, the hearts become dry. By remembering it, we are watering the thirst to reach paradise. So today, what I want us to do in this blessed gathering, inshallah, that the angels will record you being gathered here, and that Allah will forgive the sins of those who attend here tonight. And I want us to leave this world behind for an hour or so, to soften our hearts, and make our souls yearn and long for Jannah. Let us start with who is this Jannah for? Jannah is for the believers, those who believe in Allah and His Messenger, and who believe in the articles of faith, and those who carry out the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the obligatory duties, and who follow the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his sunnah, and do righteous good deeds, who fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala by staying away from what is prohibited, and love to gain Allah's pleasure, are in hope of His paradise. This jannah is for the people of Tawheed, those who do not associate partners with Allah in His worship, in His godhood and in his names and attributes. Let us start on this journey 
by reminding ourselves what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us about Jannah. Because whatever thoughts that we might have in our minds and in imagination, believe it, the reality of Jannah can never really be imagined. You can never contemplate how that Jannah really is. We will get inshallah a rough idea tonight, bi'idhnillah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he related hadith Qudsi. قال الله تعالى أعددته لعبادي الصالحين ما لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر Allah says I prepared for my righteous servants what no eye has seen what no ear has ever heard and has never crossed the mind of man and this Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه the great companion then said what the Prophet ﷺ said, recite if you wish the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا تَعَلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنٍ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنٍ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ No person knows what is kept hidden for them of a joy as a reward for what they used to do. No person knows what Allah's prepared. We don't know the delight that will fill the eyes. And when Rasulullah said in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, وَلَا خَطْرَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِ بَشَرٍ And no one has ever even imagined it. ذُقْرَ مِنْ بَلْهِ مَا أُطْلِعْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ all of that which Allah has reserved, besides all of that, you have seen nothing. Unimaginable. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimullah, the great scholar, he said, how can this weak and feeble mind of the human even try to understand what Jannah is? Jannah. There's nothing like it. Imagine yourselves standing and the gates of paradise are open before you. What is Jannah? Jannah is sparkling light. Jannah is a lovely, beautiful, fragrant smell coming towards you. Nothing how we imagined. No, adv no matter how advanced our mind is, we still will not be able to contemplate. Nothing is in comparison to this radiant joy, this place of beauty. Where the Prophet said, it is sparkling light. Lovely, aromatic, fragrant plants. A lofty palace high. Flowing rivers. Ripe fruit. Beautiful clothing. And an everlasting place to stay and live. Where you'll have unlimited joy. In beautifully, soundly constructed houses high. The Sahaba, may Allah be pleased with them. They asked Rasulullah about paradise. And he said to them, and I want you to imagine, as you enter through the gates of paradise, the scene that awaits you, you will not see a concrete or gravel or tarmac road in front of you. No, no, no. You will see the paths of Jannah lined with bricks of gold and silver. The mortar used to cement it together will be of musk, high quality perfumed musk. And you won't have rocks and stones sharp and can you know, hurt you if you trip on it. There'll be pebbles of pearls and sapphires. And whoever enters into that Jannah will never feel miserable. They'll live there forever without death. And they will never become tired and they will, their youth will never, weigh, uh, fair, uh, will never wear out, never fade out. Subhanallah. This is the Jannah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala verifies with His words in the Quran when He revealed 
وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ ثَمَّ رَأَيْتَ نَعِيمًا وَمُلْكًا كَبِيرًا And when you look there, meaning in paradise, you will see a delight and a great dominion. Brothers and sisters, when we enter into paradise, what is this paradise that we're talking about? A place, as we've mentioned, with great de delight you'll see. There you'll see people, young youths, dressed in golden cloth and silken cloth, green silk, embroidered with gold. They will have bracelets of silver. And you will be wearing these clothes. Not some cloth which will fade out after a few washes. Forget your Armani or whatever you want to wear as designer clothing. That is the designer clothing in Jannah. When you enter into Jannah, what is this place? Wadarul Salam, a place of eternal peace. Wadarul Khuld, a place that will never be destroyed, will be there eternally. Wadarul Maqam, a place for resting. Wadarul Haywan, a place of lovely, fresh, lush plants. Jannah, Jannatul Ma'wa. The everlasting paradise. al Amin, the place of security, no harm to come to you. And gardens which will never ever get destroyed. Naim, gardens for you to enjoy. We have a lot of bliss and pleasure there. Subhanallah. Where you will sit in a seat of truth. In a seat of truth near the omnipotent king, the all powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jannah. Jannah. What is this Jannah? When the mother of Harith, Al Harith came when he'd been martyred, and she said to the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, Tell me about my son Harith. If he's in Jannah or, in, or, is, or he's not in Jannah, because if he's not, you see what I'll do. She meant she's going to be devastated. And the Rasulullah said to him, Ya yeah, Umar Aritha, are you gone mad? Are you crazy? There's not one Jannah. There are Jannah and there are gardens and gardens. There are many Jannah, many, many. The plural, not one, many paradises. And he is in the highest of those, subhanAllah. Jannah, a place of different levels. Tabaqat, different levels. What about these levels? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us about the different levels of paradise. He said Jannah has 100 levels of paradise which he has reserved for those who fight in the way of Allah, Al-Mujahideen. Who fight in his cause. Now we're not talking about those who do terrorism and things like that. Those who fought sincerely in the way of Allah. Nor harming other people but fighting upon the truth. For them the distance between each of the grades of Jannah is like the distance between the heavens and the earth. So when you ask Allah for something, ask for Firdaus. Al Firdaus. Which is the highest level of paradise and the best part of paradise. Above Al Firdaus is the Arsh, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful. And from it originate the rivers of paradise. So when we ask Allah, don't ask just for Jannah. Ask Allahumma inni as'aluk al-jannatu al-firdaws al-a'la. Oh Allah, I ask you for the highest level of paradise. Why would you want the lower quality when you can have the higher quality, the best quality? So when you ask for Jannah, ask for the highest level of paradise. And when the Prophet Sallallahu was explaining about these different levels and ranks in paradise, he said, whoever believes in Allah and his apostle, who offers prayer perfectly and fast in the month of Ramadan, Allah will rightfully grant that person paradise. Whether he fights in the cause of Allah or remains in the land where he's born. So when the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, they heard this, they said, O Prophet of Allah, shall we give this good news to the people? And the Prophet said, the paradise has 100 grades. We mentioned the hadith that there are different levels for the fighters in his cause 
and the distance between them is that between the heavens and the earth. The lowest level of paradise, what do we know about it? A person will go to, on, the, oh, sorry, on that day in Jannah, Rasulullah Sallallahu told us in a hadith that Musa salam, asked his Lord, who will have the lowest position in paradise? And Allah said to him, a person will come after the people of paradise have been entered. And he will told, enter into paradise. And he will say, oh my Lord, how? Everyone has taken their place, the people have taken their places. So he'll be asked, will you be content, will you be happy if you could have the equivalent of a kingdom on earth over here? And the man will say, yes, my Lord, yes, my Lord. So he'll be told, you will have that and as much again and again and again and again. On the fifth time, he'll say, I am content with that, my Lord. And he'll be told, you will have all that and ten times more. You will have whatever your heart desires and whatever will delight your eyes. Subhanallah. And the man will say then, I'm content. I'm happy with that. Subhanallah. And we mentioned regarding the highest level of paradise. Al-Firdaus al-A'la. Musa asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so who will enter the highest level of paradise? Allah said to him, the ones who I choose. I establish their honor with my own hand. And then I set a seal over it. And they will be blessed with the bounties which no eye has seen, no ear has heard about, and no human mind can comprehend, can understand. So this confirms the ayah that we mentioned that no person knows what's kept hidden from them of, of joy as a reward for what they used to do. So if we really want this highest level of paradise, then what do we want to do about it? How do we go about getting that highest level of paradise? And if you want to know the answer to this, the answer is in the Quran, in the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us listen and remind each other of what Allah tells us, how to get to that highest level of paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَى أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, successful are the believers. Who are they? Those who offer salah with all humbleness, with all concentration, with khushu' with full submissiveness. They're serious and they're focused on their prayer. And those who turn away from Allah, dirty, false, vain, evil talk, anything which causes Allah's anger and displeasure. And those who pay the zakah, and those who guard their chastity from doing illegal haram acts, except from their wives or whom their right hands possess. For them they are free from blame. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <laughs> Those who are faithfully true to their amanat, their trust that they have with Allah, meaning that they carry out their duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their moral responsibilities are intact. So, if we match these kinds of people, Allah mentioned the Quran, the successful believers, then what? <laughs> then they will be the inheritors of paradise. 
الذين يرثون الفردوس هم فيها خالدون. They will be those who inherit the highest level of paradise. There they will live forever. Subhanallah. May Allah make us amongst those people. Brothers and sisters, that entry into paradise, how will it be? No doubt you'll be joyful just having crossed Sirat, the bridge over hellfire. And you've made it to the other side, inshallah ta'ala. And we're standing in front of the gates of paradise and they've been opened. You're not just going to walk in like that. You'll have a welcoming committee. Allah's noble angels will be the people, will be those who will welcome you to Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran. وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءُوهَا وَفُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُهَا وَقَالَ لَهُمْ خَزَنَتُهَا سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ طِبْتُمْ فَدُخُلُوهَا خَالِدِينَ And those who kept their duty to Allah will be led to paradise in groups until when they reach it, its gates will be opened before their arrival and its keepers will say, the angels, Peace be upon you. You have done well, so enter to live here forever. <coughs> Subhanallah. In the hadith of Abu Hurairah, he mentions that the Messenger of Allah said that the first people, the first group of people who enter into paradise will be glittering, shining like when the moon is full. They will not spit, nor will they blow their noses or have to relieve themselves for the call of nature. Their utensils, what they'll be eating and drinking out of, will be made of gold. Their combs of gold and silver. And their centers will be used, made of aloe wood, the oud. Their sweat will smell like musk, fragrant perfume. Every one of them will have two wives. The marrow of the bones of the wives' legs will be seen through the flesh out of excessive beauty. The people of paradise will have no differences or hatred amongst themselves. Their hearts will be as if they are one heart. They'll be glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the morning and in the evening. So brothers and sisters, you who long for Jannah, you have the shawq for Jannah, listen up and let's increase this enthusiasm for Jannah. Subhanallah, we mentioned, as you walk into Jannah, what are the roads made of? Who can remember our young brothers? I'm going to take a break here. Let's test who's awake and who's asleep. So anybody who's under 16, and a few of them, I'd like to see a few hands up. What are the roads of Jannah made of? The bricks. Who remembers? Father, go on. They have sapphires and pebbles and stones. Let's go up a bit in age. 16 to 18. Where are you, young guys? Go on. Gold and silver. Allahu Akbar. And he's not even 16 yet. Are you 16 yet? Not yet. He's eight. Allahu Akbar. Half the age. MashaAllah. I thought I'd see the oldest putting their hands up saying, I know it, I know it. Nobody. Yeah, Khwan. We're being embarrassed by our young brothers here, MashaAllah. Allah Fidah. Tayyib. So Jannah. We said the bricks are made of gold and silver. Rasulullah informed us. He said, I entered paradise where I saw lights of pearl and its soil was musk. The, the soil of Jannah is not like the clay mud that we have here that gets wet and waterlogged. You slip in it, your clothes get dirty. No, no, no. The soil of Jannah is fragrant musk. And zafran, saffron. You won't see any dog business here and there. Nothing of litter and rubbish. Jannah is a pure place. You'll smell all the best smells. 
no drainage smells, no someone's bin overflowing litter. In Jannah, there was only beautiful smell and fragrances. Once you've entered, you will see rivers and springs. Now these rivers of paradise are not like your rivers, like the Tyne or the Thames, no offense if someone likes the Tyne or the Thames. Well, you have some pollution in there, chemicals thrown in, bits of nappies and whatever waste. These rivers in Jannah are beautiful, pure, free of any kind of pollution. No rubbish or litter in there. But these rivers of Jannah are not just water. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the rivers of paradise. Imagine it. مثل الجنة التي وعد المتقون فيها أنهار من ماء غير آس وأنهار من لبن لم يتغير طعمه وأنهار من خمر لذة للشاربين the description of paradise which the muttaqun, the God-fearing people, those who have fear of Allah with taqwa, the, who have been promised, is that the rivers are rivers of water, the taste of smell, which are not changed. Rivers of milk, of which the taste never changes. You have the milk here. You leave it one or two days over the best before date, it's turned to yogurt. The milk in Jannah has no best before date. It stays fresh and sweet. It doesn't lose its taste or color, doesn't clot and curdle. And rivers of wine, delicious to those who drink. We said, our mind cannot comprehend what Jannah is. So when you think of wine, you think of people with cheese and wine or drinking, getting drunk. Yep. And the smell, stench coming from it. This is the wine of this world, which is made haram for us. But the wine of the Akhirah, the wine of Jannah, is a pure wine that does not intoxicate you. That doesn't have a bad smell. That wine of Jannah will rejuvenate you, refresh you, and will make you even more glittering and shining. A wine that will not make you drunk and intoxicate you. The halal wine. The only halal wine. And rivers of milk. We said rivers of wine. And rivers of honey or a sea of honey. A honey which is pure clarified not with half of it with glucose syrup mixed in that crystallizes this is going to be the pure honey that has such a sweet taste clear honey that will never lose that sweetness won't crystallize you just scoop it by the goblet full and you'll drink it down not the honey that's going to be bad for your health if you have too much you might get diabetes no this is the pure honey again to rejuvenate you in a hadith, the Prophet narrates, or was narrated from the Prophet In paradise, there's a sea of honey, a sea of wine, a sea of milk and a sea of water. And the rivers flow out of these seas. So from these seas and rivers, we also have smaller outlets. Springs. Springs from those, for those who are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are patient in this world, bore the hardships and stuck upon Iman and faith. What are these springs? Again, Allah enlightens us and tells us about the springs of paradise. Inna laburara yashrabuna min ka'sin kaan mizajuhu kafura Aina yashrabu biha ibadullahi yufajiruna tafjira The first of these springs is the spring of Kafur. And this is for the righteous people, the Abrar. They'll drink from this with a cup. 
and they'll mix it from the water of the spring of Kafur. Wine from one of the springs and the river from Kafur. And the spring where the slaves of Allah will drink and it will be flowing abundantly. It will never run out. It will never go out of stock. Never have to refill again. For those who are the pious ones. Then there is a second spring. The spring of Tasneem. Allah says, They'll be given this pure drink of wine to drink. Its smell will be of musk. And for those people who strive, it will be given to them for their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it will be mixed with the spring of tasneem water. A drink for those who are nearest to Allah. Again, another spring Allah mentions, the spring of Sal Sabil. And they be given a cup of wine mixed with Zanjabil, ginger, a spring called Salsabil. So no thirstiness will go. There'll be no thirstiness that will go unquenched. You'll be satisfied with these drinks. That Jannah of delicious drinks, never losing their taste, their color, their clarity. The life of Jannah. So once having this, the life of Jannah, what will it be? You've entered into Jannah. Jannah, the place of splendor, of luxury. The reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's slaves for being obedient in this world. Allah says, أُولَٰئِكَ يُجْزَوْنَ الْغُرْفَةَ بِمَا صَبَرُوا وَيُلَقَّوْنَ فِيهَا تَحِيَّةً وَسَلَامًا That those people will be rewarded with the highest place in paradise because of their patience, because of their sabr. There they'll be met with greetings and a word of peace and respect. Allah mentions these ghurafat, these chambers, these dwellings, that they're for those who are obedient to Allah and they'll be very, very high places. Who are they for? For those who are obedient to Allah. Those who did not go back on their deen. Those who didn't get Allah's anger. These dwellings, let us ex explain more. The palaces or the Tents of paradise. Not like what we see here. A tent, you go camping, you put the sticks up, you get the cloth there, you have to put the poles and everything. And about 10 hours later, you just fall into the tent and you're knocked out. No, no. And that tent is maybe seven, eight feet high maximum. These dwellings, the tents in Jannah and the palaces will be very, very high. Well constructed. There will be constructed out of a single pearl. Now you're thinking pearls are small, you find in the oyster. What did we say? We cannot imagine what Jannah is like. So now I want you to think, look at that pearl. How would you live in a pearl? It'd be the size of a house. Okay, size of a mansion. Good. Size of, what's the tallest building? Burj Al Khalifa? Is it Burj Khalifa? How high do you think that is? Close to three quarters of a mile? That's big. If you look there, you stand there, you look up, up there, ooh, you go dizzy. Forget all this. This is nothing in comparison. Each palace, each tent made out of that one pearl, hollowed out pearl, will be 60 miles high. Subhanallah. 
We traveled, we traveled today maybe 80 miles. So subhanAllah, two hours journey by car. 60 miles high. You can't imagine that. No building on earth. Never mind 60. We don't have a one mile high building. Can you imagine a pearl for you? A glistening pearl, 70 miles, 60 miles high. Subhanallah. And these pearls, your residence is Jannah. You'll see them occupied by whom? They're not going to be empty. Allah says, Hur is the women of paradise. Beautiful, fair females, restrained in pavilions, waiting there. You've got a homecoming party there. A beautiful woman, especially for you. This is for the men, by the way. Sister, we'll get to that later, inshallah. These tents, subhanAllah, out of a single hollow pearl. And you can see inside and inside out, transparency. And you will see them when you look into the night sky when there's no pollution. You see sparkling stars. You will see the North Star. You'll see the different constellations. Well, in Jannah, you will see each other's palaces like you see the shining stars in the sky. Subhanallah. Some on that side, some at that level, some higher, some right up. You're straining to see where it is. And of course, the better believer you were in this world, the higher your level in paradise. Your rankings go up. Just in the same way we see these stars, we'll see our places, our palaces in paradise. Some of the companions were told that the people of paradise, when the Prophet told them, that the people of paradise, they will look at the dwellers in these lofty mansions. In the same way that you look at a brilliant star far away in the east or in the west on the horizon. And that is because of their superiority over one another in rewards. Now when the companions, and may Allah be happy with them, pleased with them. When they heard this, they said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, these mansions you're talking about in the sky, nobody can reach them. Rasulullah, meaning that maybe they're only for the prophets. And the messengers and he sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them by allah in whose hand my life is in some men who believe in allah and testify to the truth of the prophets will be able to reach there they're not reserved exclusively for the prophets and the messengers for the people for the ibadullah for the servants of allah they will also be in the neighborhood of the prophets and the messengers. May Allah make us amongst them. Ameen. Jannah. Where we live with your beloved wives. With an S. Most people have one wife. You put the S on, World War III starts. Wives in Jannah for men. Our sister's probably getting a bit angry now. Like, Why is he talking about wives, wives, wives? Because it's the reality, the truth. Allah says in the Quran, Jannatu adni adkhulunaha wa man salaha min abaihim wa azwajihim wa dhuriyatihim Gardens, everlasting gardens which they'll enter. And those are for those who act righteous from among their fathers and their wives and their offspring. So from amongst the wives, you'll have wives of this world. So your wife from this world, or wives from this world, inshallah, will be with you in Jannah. Inshallah. Say Ameen. Amen. Inshallah. Our sisters, Ibshir, good news for them. Rasulullah gave our sisters, our women folk, a golden pass into Jannah. Sorry, guys, this is for our sisters now. What was that golden pass into Jannah? When Rasulullah sallallahu informed us in the hadith, the meaning of the hadith, that if a woman prays her five daily prayers, 
fasts her month of Ramadan, obeys her husband, meaning all that is halal, all is good, and guards her chastity. She's not unfaithful. Then it will be said to her, Enter paradise by whichever of the gates you wish. Subhanallah. That's what our sisters need to do. A golden pass. Brothers, sorry for us, we don't get that easy. We have to work a bit harder. But inshallah, we continue with the efforts and we'll be there with our wives inshallah. Once a woman came to Aisha radiallahu anha, may Allah please with her. She had two young girls, <coughs> or two daughters. And she asked her for some food, because she had no food. Aisha radiallahu anha, she rummaged around, and finally she found just one date. Subhanallah, look at that. In the household of the Prophet only one date. Are we thankful for what we have today? So this one date, Aisha radiallahu anha, give it to this lady. Now, she's got two girls in front of her. So what she did, she split the date, she gave it to her daughters. And then she left. When the Prophet ﷺ came to visit Aisha later, radiallahu anha, she told her, she told him, sorry, she told the Prophet ﷺ, about this incident, how this woman, she had that only one day, and she just split it and gave it to her children. Took nothing for herself. Just gave it to her children. And Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, told her, Allah became, the word ta'ajjab in Arabic, is not exactly amazed, but something very pleased, or preferred this action above other actions. Was amazed and was, not, not which they amazed, but yeah, he, it was so loved to Allah, this action. It was so preferred to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that on account of just this one action, it was the reason for her to enter paradise. Subhanallah. So sometimes we do one action and we don't know the action could be. Maybe that one action saves us from hellfire and puts us into Jannah. Or maybe we do one action which we think is good and is not and is an evil action. And it could be our downfall preventing us from going to Jannah and entering into Jahannam. Na'udhu Billah min dharik. So here, this paradise is given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we mentioned regarding the, the women of paradise. Their eyes, their glances are for only their husbands. Now sisters, maybe wondering am I going to be jealous am I going to deal with it nowadays and that's the reality if somebody wanted to take another wife and it was for the right reasons and he was able to afford etc it's very difficult for some of our sisters to accept that that's human nature there's no shame in that saying that and there's no criticism of our sisters because it's the nature of the woman. She has attachment. She craves that love and affection. Doesn't want to share her man with anybody else. Will our sisters be able to deal with that in paradise? Because here we're talking about women. Their beauty was, is such that if a single one was to look into this world, it would fill the whole world with her light. Her beauty <clears throat> is such that none has touched them before. None has seen them before. They've been created pure, untouched. Like rubies and corals. Here, getting back to that. That when you're given wives in Jannah, remember this. And this has put our sisters' hearts to rest, inshallah. Before you go into Jannah, you, your heart will be cleansed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. وَنَزَعَنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِم مِّنْ غِلْ And we shall remove from their chest and from their hearts any hatred or sense of injury. There'll be no jealousy, no envy, no maliciousness. 
Before we enter Jannah, our hearts will be purified and clear. So when our sisters see that the husband's wives are waiting for them, they will not take offense. Allah will make the heart pure. It will be acceptable and easy for them. Those wives of Jannah, as we said, will be welcoming you. Open-armed. Have been awaiting your arrival. Not just from that time, from your time on earth. And here is a word of advice for our sisters as well. That when a wife upsets her husband, the wives from his wives in Jannah, they criticize and they shout on her that this person only with you in this world, he's our husband to come soon. Like almost cursing. Because they're waiting his arrival. But in Jannah, as we say, once you're there, no jealousy, no hardship, no envy. Everyone is clean hearted. You will see men and women without any screen or veils, Barda. You will sit together without the need for separation because your hearts are being cleansed. Here, if men and women sit together, the eyes are the soul of sin. Thoughts come, desires come, because this is the human heart in the state, not cleansed. We're affected. But in Jannah, you won't have these thoughts. So you'll see your neighbors, the brothers and sisters, no need for hijab. You'll be there talking like as your brothers and sisters. Because they have nothing of bad feeling in your hearts. We mentioned in Jannah that from the delights of Jannah is that you will be dressed in the best of clothes. You'll be dressed in silken garments with bracelets of silver. You will sit not on chairs, not on a sofa or a recliner. You'll be sitting on golden thrones, thrones like kings, encrusted with rubies and pearls and gems, with deep plump cushions on there. Whatever you want, you'll get it. You want food. No need to do just eat. Take where you wait 35 minutes. Is he going on time? He's not on time. I want a discount. In Jannah, you want it, you think of it, straight away, someone will come to you. Who is this someone? Listen to what Allah tells us. Around them will be young youths, young boys, serving boys, servants of everlasting youth. If you see them, you'll think they're like scattered pearls. Whatever you want, they'll bring for you. Straight away. No need for cooking time. Ready roasted. Not overdone, not underdone. No, no fear of food poisoning there. <clears throat> not like some restaurants you go to. Sorry. Here in Jannah, you'll be sitting with shade. The temperature in Jannah is going to be ambient temperature. Not too hot, not too cold. But you'll have shade there as well. Many kinds of fruits will be given to you. Allah says, <laughs> And fruits in plenty. It's never going to run out. Whose season is not limited and the supply will not be cut off. Today, if I like mangoes and I want the really good mangoes, whether it's Alfonso or John's, uh, whichever mango I want, it's only in certain seasons that I get the mango, yes? It's not going to be all year round. Normally, normal grown mangoes are not like that. In Jannah, never goes out of season. Anytime you want the fruit, it's given to you. And you'll be given this fruit as it comes to you. A beautiful, ripe fruit. And when you bite into it, it will be so juicy, 
so delicious, so sweet. And you say, wow, never tasted a fruit like this before. And then another fruit looking just the same we brought to you. And you bite into this one. You say, well, I've had this before. Try it. And you bite into it. And it will be so delicious and so juicy, different taste. You'll think, I never had a fruit like this. Those are the fruits of Jannah. Every time you're given that fruit, you'll be given another one and another one. Endless varieties, subhanAllah. The food of Jannah, one of the first dishes you'll be given will be the cordet lobe, the liver of the fish. It'll be prepared beautifully, so tasty. And whatever food you want, you want barbecued chicken, it'll come ready made. Manna was salwa, fruits of Jannah, salwa is the tiny quails. Barbecued, it'll come to you straight away. As we said, no need to dial up and wait. It'll be there ready for you. Delicious, tasty. Allah says, And the flesh of fowls that they desire, the birds of Jannah, whatever you want, it'll come to you. Think of it, khalas, it'll come to you on a platter, just like that. The Jannah of delicious food and drink. So now we've had lovely food, lovely drink. When you've been out for a good meal, and you sat there, ah, oh, mashallah, that was good. And you're unbuttoning the top button because you're over eight. And after a long, what happens? Digestion takes place. And at the end of digestion, you need to go to the loo. Get rid of the wastes, what your body doesn't need. What about in Jannah? No wastes in Jannah. No urine, no defecation. No number one and two. No burping. You know, sometimes you're in the masjid, maybe an uncle just had a full meal and, you know, it came out. And you think, oh Allah, I wish I wasn't standing here. Because burp smell. In Jannah, your food will digested and you will burp. But not like that smelly burp. That burp will be smell of musk. A beautiful smell. A fragrant smell. We won't offend anybody, won't harm anybody. And the sweat is musk. So there's no wastes in Jannah going to the toilet. Once you've eaten and drank, you're now going to want to relax, chill a bit. Young guys in their talk. So, you'll be sat there, talking to each other. And one of the things that you'll say, Allah tells us in the Quran, وَنَادَى أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أَصْحَابَ النَّارِ The people of the paradise will call out to the people of the fire. أَنْقَدْ وَجَدْنَا مَا وَعَدَنَا رَبُّنَا حَقَّا فَهَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ مَا وَعَدَكَ مَا وَعَدَ رَبُّكُمْ حَقَّا قَالُوا نَعَمْ فَأَذَّنَ مُؤَذِّنٌ بَيْنَهُمْ أَنْ لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ So when the people of hell, uh, paradise will call on the people of hellfire, they'll say, Did you not find true what Allah promised you? And they'll say, Yes. We found Allah promised because Allah said if you don't obey him the hellfire for you that is Allah's promise and they will say yes then they'll hear someone shouting out between them the curse of Allah is on the wrongdoers in this world as Muslims you'll be faced with many tests on account of your iman your faith don't think just because I'm a Muslim that I'm going to live my life trouble free. How do we know this? In the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif Lam Mim Ahasiban Nasu Ayyutraku Ayyakulu 
أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون ألف لام ميم None except Allah knows the meaning of these letters Does mankind think Does mankind think that just because they say we believe That they will not be tested and put to trials وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ that Allah will surely make known those who are the truthful ones, those who stick with the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who belie the message, those who, who deny Allah's ayat and have turned away from Allah. So life it will be a test. You may be walking down the street and someone will insult you because you're a Muslim. Our sisters are having the hijabs pulled off and spat on because they are wearing the hijab. May Allah keep them upon istiqam, upon strength of, of iman and uprightness. There are people who make fun of you because you have a beard on your face, you're following the sunnah of Muhammad and following his commandment. You have your own people mocking you. Oh, you pray five times a day. You become big sheikh, big molvi sahab. Your friends. Oh, you ain't cool. Because you go to the mosque after school. You don't hang around the corner with the boys chilling out. With Yes. So you'll be faced from all angles, problems, and tests. A test of your patience. You'll be insulted, maybe you'll be hit, physically attacked, like our brothers and sisters. Whether it's in Kashmir, whether it's in Palestine, whether it's in Burma. All over the world our Muslim brothers and sisters are facing problems, persecution. But when we get to Jannah, this is where Allah will repay everyone for what they did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to us. فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنَ الْكُفَّارِ يُضْحَكُونَ عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ يَنْظُرُونَ هَلْ ثُوِّبَ الْكُفَّارُ مَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ But on that day, those who believe will laugh at the disbelievers whilst they're sitting on the high thrones of believers, looking down on them. And it was said, are, the, are not the disbelievers paid back fully for what they used to do? There is payback for them. Allah will punish them for what they did and reward you for the sabr that you had and for staying upon the deen of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> it is a place where we will talk about what we did. We'll reminisce, we'll have memories about how we used to be in the dunya. وَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَىٰ بَعْضٍ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ قَالُوا إِنَّا كُنَّا قَبْلُ فِي يَحْلِنَا مُشْفِقِينَ فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا وَوَقَانَا عَذَابَ السَّمُومِ إِنَّا كُنَّا مِنْ قَبْلُ نَدْعُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْبَرُّ الرَّحِيمِ and some of them will come close to each other, questioning themselves, saying, Before, do you remember, we were afraid with our families from the punishment of Allah. But Allah has been gracious to us and has saved us from the punishment of the hellfire. Indeed, we used to only ask Allah alone and no one else. And indeed, He is the one who is the most wise, He is the most courteous, the most kind and generous and the most merciful. That is Allah's promise. And they'll say, had it not been for the grace of my Lord, I would certainly have been amongst those thrown to hell. None enters Jannah except by Allah's fadl, by His grace and bounty and His mercy. Not even the prophets. When the companion asked, they said, even you, Rasulullah. They said, yes, even me. We enter on account of Allah's grace and His mercy. Not just because of the actions that we do. Without Allah's grace and mercy, there's no entry into paradise. In Jannah, a place where there will be no more death and no more punishment. For sure, from the Muslims, if they were sinful, they will be thrown into Jahannam and will punish what Allah wishes. Some for a short period of time, some for a long period of time. But however, 
after a certain time, those who had even iman, the speck of a, a mustard seed, will be taken out of Ayatul Jahannam and entered into paradise because of Allah's mercy. After that, there'll be no death. Allah says, أَفَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَيِّتِينَ are then we not to die anymore? إِلَّا مَوْتَةً الْأُولَى وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمُعَذَّبِينَ Except for the first death, and we will not then be punished. إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Indeed, this is a supreme success. لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَلْيَعْمَلِ الْعَامِلُونَ For the like of this, to get this reward, let the workers work. I mean, do your good actions. So after entering the paradise, drinking from its rivers and streams, eating of the best foods, living in the best of homes, being given hand and foot waiter service, you'll also go to the Hawd, the pool of the Prophet Al-Kawthar, the one that has been promised. And you'll be given by the blessed hand of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi a drink from his pool. A drink which you drink from it, after which you will never feel thirsty again. Except those who did shirk or any other similar things, they'll be turned away from this. Yet, even after this, being in the company of the Prophet Sallallahu being in the company of the Sahaba, you will see them. You will sit with them, inshallah. You will visit them. But after this, there is still an ultimate delight. One pleasure which nobody, nobody can experience until they've entered into paradise. That pleasure is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed, about, informed us about when he told us when the people of paradise enter paradise, Allah will say to them, do you want anything more? And they'll say, have you not made our faces white? Meaning, haven't you honored us already? Have you not admitted us to paradise and saved us from the hellfire? And then the veil, the hijab, will be lifted. And you will never have seen anything more beautiful or anything that can be more beloved than this sight. And that sight will be, you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without a veil between us and him. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةِ For those who have done good is the best reward. لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ There, they will have all that they desire and we have more. Ziyada and Mazid. Both of these words, they mean that you will look on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will gaze upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a joy and honor that will be denied to the disbelievers and the mushrikeen. As Allah says, Surely the evildoers will be veiled from seeing their Rabb on that day. And Allah says about the believers, their prize, the ultimate prize. Some faces on that day will be shining and radiant, looking at their Lord. Imam Malik, may Allah please with him, 
<coughs> he said that this ayah regarding looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Lord, it is literal in the meaning that you would see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because some people, they gave a misinterpretation, they took it out of context. And they said it means that you'll be waiting for your reward. And Imam Malik said, they have lied. They have lied. The people will look at Allah on the day of resurrection with their own eyes. In Jannah, they will see their Lord. Otherwise, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that the kuffar will be veiled from seeing him? And Imam at tahawi in his Aqidah at tahawiyyah he says, seeing Allah is something which is true. Something will happen to the people of paradise. And it's not, it's not necessary to try to define it or say what it's going to be like or how it will be. Rather, it's mentioned and we believe in it. And it's mentioned in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the way it will happen is according to the will and knowledge of Allah. And we have to believe in it as it was narrated from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu wa in the Sahih Hadith. We should not interpret it according to our own desires and inclinations and opinions. For no one is sound in his deen except the one who submits fully to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Messenger sallallahu alayhi So here, if there's anything which is ambiguous, we're not sure about the meaning, we never try to take the meaning from ourselves. And this sadly, I have to mention, from some of our young brothers, sometimes we have this fire in us for da'wah. And we say things, and we quote things, which may not be 100% correct, or true, or in the understanding, the sharh, the explanation of the hadith. So we should be very careful in what we narrate, what we say. If we say an ayah, we should know it's in the correct context. If we produce a hadith, make sure we've understood it. Not just to take it out of context, okay? Using it as we want to. As one of the scholars, Dr. Sarah Ahmed, ta'ala, he mentioned that the Quran and Sunnah is like the wax of a candle. Whichever way you want to mold it, you can do so. Meaning, people can take it out of context and use it for their own understanding and ways. So inshallah, we try to take the Quran and Sunnah in the correct understanding, according to the understanding of a pious predecessors, the ones who the Prophet said that they are the best of the generations. The best of generations, my generation, then those who come after them, and those who come after them. The companions, may Allah be pleased with them. Those who came the next generation, Tabi'een, the likes of Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik. And those who came after them, the likes of Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed Hanbal, and the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah, in order that we have the correct understanding of the deen. So, brothers and sisters, we say that this Jannah, to remind us, is for those who are obedient to Allah. <coughs> this Jannah is for those who perform their five daily prayers on time. For those who give the zakah, those who do the hajj, those who fast Ramadan, those who sacrifice their sleep in the last third of the night, those who are dutiful to their parents and don't disobey parents, those parents who keep their duty to Allah and raise their children in the correct manner, those who look to the rights of their neighbors, Muslim and non-Muslim, those who are upon tawheed and stay away from shirk, Worshipping other than Allah or asking other than Allah. Those who guard their eyes and their limbs, their hands and legs from doing haram. Those who strive in the way of Allah and give their lives for Allah. Those who live a life of tawheed and die upon la ilaha illallah. May Allah make us amongst those who live and die in this manner. Ameen. Brothers and sisters, I leave you with some last words of advice. Everybody wants to go to Jannah if they're Muslim. Everybody, inshallah. The question is, what are we doing about it? If I'm doing bad in my life, when will I change? Am I waiting for tomorrow? Or next week, or next month, or next year? Is death going to wait for you? You've heard the description of paradise. 
And I doubt there's anybody here or any Muslim after hearing the description of paradise doesn't want it. But you need to earn it. You need to get yourself ready for it. Because when the angel of death comes, it's too late to do extra. I wish I'd done this. I didn't do this. And death awaits all of us. Allah tells us. قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعَمَلُونَ Say, indeed, death. The death that you are trying to run away from, flee from. Surely it will meet you. And then you'll be sent back, meaning to Allah, the all-knower of the unseen and the seen. And He will tell you what you used to do. So before that time comes, Brothers and sisters, I advise myself and yourselves. Work towards righteous good deeds. Change your lives. Ask Allah for forgiveness, for tawbah. That he sets you straight towards a path of paradise. And I leave you finally with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as advice to myself and yourselves. When Allah says, لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَلْيَعْمَلِ الْعَامِلُونَ So for the like of this, let the workers work for it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all amongst the people of paradise, to reside with the prophets and the martyrs and the righteous. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower His mercy down upon us, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from his punishment and the punishment of the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us, our families, our wives and our children, our relatives, our neighbors, Muslim and non-Muslims, towards the truth, Islam, and that he makes us amongst the people of paradise. Ameen. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. استغفرك وأتوب